Okay. A water slide a water slide ends at a height of 1.5 meters above the surface of the water. If a person starts at rest at the top of the slide, slides down, and lands two and a half meters away from the end of the slide in the horizontal direction, what is the height of the slide? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture and make sure that everything I'm thinking matches reality, what I would expect to happen in reality. So I have a slide. And we're not sure we're not sure about the height of that slide, but we do know that it ends one or it ends uh, 1.5 meters above the surface of the water. 1.5 meters above the surface of the water. We also know that however high it is, someone's sliding off. So someone's starting at rest up here and sliding off the end of this slide. will land 2.5 meters away. This distance here is 2.5 meters. I'm going to call that delta x. We also know that we're looking for just the height of the slide. Not the height of the man from the water, but the height of the slide itself. Okay, so let's talk about conceptually what we need to know from the problem. So we know that at the top, he's at rest, so he has no kinetic energy, but he does have potential energy. He does have potential energy, and we can represent that by the force of gravity, mg, at times the distance that it has to travel, which is h. And all of that potential energy is going to be transferred, or transformed, converted into kinetic energy at the bottom. And at the very bottom, he has his kinetic energy. So we're getting the potential energy from the top, all of it transforming into kinetic energy at the bottom, which is equal to 1 half mv squared. Great. Okay, so now we have everything we need except for v. Well, they gave us this handy little kinematics problem at the bottom of the slide, and they tell us that he ends up falling 2.5 meters away. So, we know the acceleration of gravity is constant. He's going to fall off the slide at the same rate, no matter what happens. He's not curving up on the slide. He's not being shot down. He's just having his uh, speed converted into horizontal speed. So, his horizontal speed will stay constant. So, if we could just figure out how long it took him to go this 2.5 meters, we know his velocity. So, let's set that up. We know that delta y or the distance that he fell, 1.5 meters, is the same as 1 half his acceleration, g, squared, uh, sorry, not squared, <laughs> 1 half g times time squared, and it would be plus his initial velocity in the y direction, and we're saying that that initial velocity in the y direction is zero. He has x velocity, he has velocity in this direction, the x direction, but not in the vertical direction, not up and down. Okay, so let's rearrange this and solve for t. So we get that t equals uh, square root of 2 delta y over g. Great. Okay, so delta y, remember, is 1.5 meters. Uh, g is 9.8, and we can solve for time, the time that it took him to fall down here. So let's plug that in quickly. So 2 times 1.5 is 3 meters over g, and square root that, and that's equal to 3 divided by 9.8. So square root of 3 divided by 9.81 gives us 0.553. So point t equals 0.55 seconds. Great. OK. So now we need a velocity. So remember that velocity is just equal to his displacement over time. And we're saying that his displacement was 2.5 meters. He flew away 2.5 meters from the lip of that slide. So we could say that 2.5 meters.
over the time that it took, which in this case is 0.55 seconds, will give us his velocity as he leaves that slide, as he leaves that slide. So we have uh, 2.5 divided by 0.55, and that gives us 4. That gives us 4.5 meters per second. 4.5 meters per second. Okay, so we have everything we need to work our equation. Now you might be tempted just to plug everything in and do everything kind of clunky, but if we know that we're solving for h, let's rearrange this equation to just have h alone on one side and plug everything on uh, just one side of the equation. So let's rewrite that equation to, I'll do it on this side, on this space. So we have mgh, his potential energy at the top, is transformed into kinetic energy at the bottom, And we're rearranging to solve for h. So h is equal to, I'm sorry, before we get there, we can cancel out our m's there on both sides. So h is equal to v squared over 2g. Now notice this looks eerily similar to our height equation uh, when we did kinematics. That's because that kinematic equation uses certain inferences for energy. Remember that that only works when air resistance is negligible. So we know all of the things we need to plug into this uh, equation. So we have his velocity, which we said was 4.5 meters per second. We're going to square that. And we're going to divide by 2 times 9.81. 2 times g. Oh, not to the power of, but divide by. 2.5 squared divided by 2g. And we get that the height of that slide is not as high as I might have thought, but it's 1.032 meters. If you round in different places, for example, if you rounded to a different uh, significant figure value in the time or in the velocity, you might have a possible answer of 1.04 or 1.05. But the important part is that we arrived to this equation, that this equation lines up, and that we remember that our energy is conserved. So as long as our energy is conserved, we can rest assured that the problem is done correctly within a margin of error.